one of the things I want most in my practice is an inhibitor of PIK3CA mutations, given how common they are in breast cancer. And we heard at ASCO, you know, an, an update on some of the PI3 kinase inhibitor uh, trials, and we have some other data that we've heard before from Buparlisib. Hope, can you give us your, your take on, on where we're at with the inhibitors of the PI3 kinase? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm very, very interested in P, having PI3 kinase inhibitors in the clinic eventually. Um, and I think we're moving closer to that with data presented this year, although we still need more. Uh, so about, as you pointed out, it's the most common mutation seen in hormone receptor positive breast cancer. Close to 50% of patients have a PI3 kinase mutation. And we're seeing now that that's a change over time, as we talked about uh, before, you know, we see these mutations emerge during therapy. So it's actually quite interesting. Maybe we'll be able to screen more with blood as we move forward. So the first PI3 kinase inhibitor that reported data was buparlisib, which is a pan-PI3 kinase inhibitor. There was another one called pictilisib, which had a negative phase two trial. But buparlisib was the subject of two phase three studies. And these phase three studies included either patients who'd had prior mTOR inhibition or patients who did not. And the trials actually were not uh, set up prospectively to look only at the PI3 kinase mutant population as a primary endpoint. It was at all patients. Buparlisib as a pan PI3 kinase inhibitor is quite toxic. It's got a marked increase in transaminitis, it transaminases in a subset of patients, and it has a half-life of 40 hours, so you've got to wait a long time for those liver enzymes to get better. People get depressed, and the depression can be quite severe. It's not just the normal depression we see in our patients. Uh, but And so there are side effects that are concerning with buparlisib, which I think make it a less useful agent. But the really cool thing about these two different trials, BEL2 and BEL3, is that they looked at patients who had PI3 kinase mutations, either looking at cell-free DNA or in a situation where they had tissue, also a tissue. One of the studies actually showed a very nice correlation between the mutations in blood and the mutations in archived tissue, which is really important for us. You know, it's not perfect, but it's pretty good. And they also showed that the progression-free survival benefit, which even in the positive trial was pretty minor, it wasn't what, with the toxicity, we wouldn't consider that a clinically meaningful difference, 1.9 months. But the, what they did show was that the difference was much greater in the PI3 kinase mutant population. Again, it's not definitive data, but the fact that both BEL2 and BEL3 showed that, I thought was very encouraging. So what that led to was two randomized phase three trials using more alpha-specific, not only alpha-specific, but more alpha-specific PI3 kinase inhibitors with a primary endpoint of being able to look in the PI3 kinase mutant population, and that's really important. So what we saw at ASCO this year is tocilisib, which is a PI3 kinase inhibitor that also has both alpha and delta activity. And uh, that trial is called the Sandpiper trial that Jose Baselga presented. And they had uh, over 500 patients who had known PI3 kinase mutations. And in that group of patients, there was an improvement in progression-free survival, although it wasn't what we've seen with CDK4-6 inhibitors, only two months. And in fact, in that mutant population, the PFS was relatively short, which was kind of intriguing because the partner was fulvestrant, where we're used to seeing these much longer PFS, and we saw them in the CDK4-6 inhibitor second line trials. So this is clearly a subpopulation that we're looking at here. Uh, and then the hazard ratio there was 0.7. They also looked at a small population who had PI3 kinase wild type, about 100 patients. Very difficult to interpret data in that group. Uh, but the biggest issue with tocilisib is the toxicity. A lot of patients, dose-reduced, held, some patients discontinued due to toxicity, and that toxicity was diarrhea because it causes colitis. Sixty percent of patients had some degree of diarrhea. Uh, they also saw rash and hyperglycemia, which is a class effect of the uh, PI3 kinase inhibitors. So I think that we've moved from understanding that that may be a selection criteria to trying to find a good inhibitor that causes less toxicity, we've moved one step a little bit closer. Very interesting. And, uh, you know, like you said, a, a positive trial. Um, and it raises the question because very few patients that had prior CDK4-6 inhibitors. Less in than that, 2%. Less than 2%. Yeah. And that's the question we really need to know, isn't it? You know, those, because the PI3 kinase can be an 
a mechanism of escape. You know? and, and also Maybe because most of the, yeah. the, the driving mutations in, in breast cancer are in the alpha subunit, PIK3CA, and so the more alpha specific, theoretically, the better. And so alpelisib, and we're still waiting the, for the readout of that randomized trial, is another, uh, and this one's a little more selective for, uh, for the alpha isoform and um, maybe has less toxicities based on the data so far. We'll see, of course, when the phase three data are out. So we still are looking for this class of drugs to, to make a difference. The SOLAR-1 trial is, in fact, the phase three trial, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. looking at alpelisib with full vestrant. So very similar design, and it's powered to look at the PI3 kinase mutant population. And we hope to see that data later this year, so 2018. Hopefully, will be the year where we see both of, right. both of these right. studies uh, be reported. And there's an ongoing trial called BILEAVE, which is looking at uh, alpelisib along with uh, a two different hormone therapies in patients who have a PI3 kinase mutation and whose last treatment included a CDK4-6 inhibitor. Yay. Very frustrating Yay. in the clinical trial setting, but will give us the information we yeah. want. Yeah. yeah, so we gotta stay tuned, stay tuned. Yeah. Some Absolutely. real proof of concept emerging, but we gotta stay, stay tuned a little bit um, more.